Jen Spark is being touted as the next new super agent. And my goal is to find out today with three tests if it can replace your entire tech stack. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Staley, and I specialize in AI transformation specifically for go to market teams, executives, you name it. I'm nailing it. But today I want to go through this new super agent that's been released called Gen Spark. And there's been getting a lot of noise, a lot of positive feedback. And what I've liked to do, because there's so much hype and money spent on branding, is always test out the tools and find out, is it legit or should you quit using it, right? And so I'm going to break down three simple tests that I did today. And by the end of the video, if you stay, I'll show you how you could use any agent and give you the prompt as well to execute and really truly understand how to get the most out of any super agent, okay? So let's begin. So today, let me share my screen. I'm gonna get right into it. And what you're gonna see is the natural screen and flow that this has, which is really interesting. I don't quite understand why they have like this news feed below. I don't know what this is about. It's kind of interesting, but also distracting at the same time. So, but what it's talking about are the examples of, as you can see, AI slides, AI sheets, you can generate videos, call for it, AI chat, and all agents, okay? So if you look at it, these are the areas along the, along the side. Now, what I'm going to do is like, I look at utility, right? So if I'm in business and I want to leverage this, being an entrepreneur, a CEO, or for my clients, right? Sales leaders, marketing leaders, sales executive marketers, you name it. Like, I want to make sure this actually works for what I'm going to use it for, not just some fancy demo. And so what I did is I put it through three tests and I'm going to go through each one of these today. Okay. So let's start off with the presentation. All right. So one of the things I did is, as you can see here, I'm going to go all the way to the top. I created a prompt. And what I did is I asked it for a 16 page PowerPoint presentation. Now, the beautiful thing about this is this is a prompt that I use to have Steve Jobs effectively help me create an Apple style presentation, right? What he used to do. And, and just mesmerize people. There's a whole book called The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. Harvested some details from that and integrated in this prompt. And here's what I'm asking too, and feel free to drop it in the comments. If you want, like I'm strongly considering any kind of prompts that I have within here to include those as a value for you. So if you want, I could always include this, but drop it in the comments and let me know. So anyways, as you could see, this is very involved. It goes through all the visuals, how to create this, how to psychologically engage. And, and so it's a pretty detailed output. And so what it does, I put it through and it took, it took about five, six minutes to create this entire deck. But let me show you what it came up with. And, and by the way, after it went through, it looked like there were some slides that were good and some that were mediocre. So I asked it to redo it, okay? So what this is, is based off my value prop. And so there's some unique things like work less, sell more. Okay, so that was strong. Uh, the villain, the revenue drag. And I kind of like how it's like dropping the calendar into the time glass. Um, pretty creative in terms of the animation there. Now, cost of inaction, um, I like the ticking clock. However, so basically it's basically identifying, I said basically twice, it's identifying like like the, the revenue loss annually based on just the time burn of not implementing and integrating AI in your go-to-market team. Okay, so this is cut off. A little disappointed on that. This visual is pretty cool. It's got the, uh, like, almost kind of like the, the readout with the heads-up display, and it's got the teammate. However, like, as you can see, it's off-centered. This one's downloading. I don't know quite what's going on there. The 60-second blueprint. That was working before. I had a countdown clock. Holy smokes. Rule of three, time, intelligence, and capacity, right? Cyborg, superhuman, and agent. This, this, I mean, there's some elements of this I like. However, like, as you can see, the $1 turning to six isn't showing up. This, this slide is fire. I think this is, this is fantastic in terms of the concept. Uh, and this is more like you could insert or paste it in there with like some hero slides. Okay. So like, I think this is solid, has some really promising ones. Like I love this clock. Like it really gets across the component. Some of these other areas are cool, but like, so like I'm a big proponent of like, all right, what else can I try this in and do a comparison, right? So the tool that I use is Gamma. So I threw this in Gamma, basically the same exact output. I didn't change anything and really didn't even give it in extensive details. I just used the prompt. And so 
this is what it came up with, right? And I'm going to walk you through it because I was pretty impressed with Gamma with the output that it created. And of course, now that I'm trying to show it to you, it's not coming up. I don't know what's going on there. So let me stop sharing temporarily. and We'll get that back on in a second. As you can see, like, oh, here we go. As soon as I stop, it's right there. Totally right there. Okay, so let's show this here. All right. So it's pulling up. So if you haven't used Gamma, it is really strong for visuals and can create presentations, websites, social files. And for some reason it's, okay, there we go. So now this kind of walks through, same prompt. All right, doesn't have as much animations, but like, I actually like this better. I think the quality of the output was significantly better as you go through it, okay? so. As you can see, it's got all these different areas that, it, that it's hitting on. It's got like that cyborg, like that head up display. I thought that, I think this looks so cool. Like with a little kind of Iron Man, it's got, it's stayed truer to the message that I was trying to get. Talks about the levers. I like this evolution journey from like cyborg to secret agent. And so, you know, in terms of round one, I would say, like I would go with this to Gamma. I would use GenSpark for their presentations. I tried it one other time. It was really good at creating visuals, but the visuals didn't export properly into PowerPoint. So, okay. So let's look at number two. So number two is what comes up is research all the time. And, you know, there's a lot of research tools. So I think it's getting harder and harder for general purpose agents to compete with research tools like deep research across Google or across ChatGPT. And so, however, I saw their data release and I was really excited about it. So I'm like, I have to try this. And the data release showed visualization. It showed pulling up data. It was really, really impressive. So what I did is I gave it a very specific prompt. And I didn't want to leave it like a lot of latitude by design so that it would give me the exact detail, details and output I looked at. So if you look at this here, I asked for tabular format. And I'm looking at a portfolio company called Vista Equity. If you don't know Vista Equity, they're one of the largest private equity companies in the world. I clicked on their, their portfolio company page, and you'll see this with private equity or venture capital. And I asked them to click all the, all the portfolio companies, brief description, headquarters location, status of investment, date of investment, LinkedIn URL, number of salespeople, chief revenue officer, and the CRO's date hire. So I went through this, and like this thing burned up a ton of my credits because it's starting to do a good job. However, it only pulled up 10. And what it got stuck on was the number of salespeople. So if you're a GenSpark provider, or I should say, if you work at the company, you might want to look at like some fail safe if it can't find the details because it just kept looping and looping and looping and I had to stop it, okay? At the same time, I looked at like my credits and I had to upgrade. I burned through maybe 10,000 credits, which I think you get 20,000 um, just from these two exercises or three exercises I did. And I think this was the one that burned the most credits. So I was hyper specific and I'm like, all right, what happens if I try this in Gemini, right? So let's see if this, and so the one thing I did in Gemini is Gemini has unlimited deep research. So I, I put the exact same prompt in. And as you could see, it pulled not just 10, but every single company in their portfolio with their, their LinkedIn URL for the most of them, I should say about half of them. But then if you look over here, let's go up. I'm sorry. Let's go up. See this? Okay. So if we go over, it's got the whole name of the company, the website, the URL, and the, uh, the company LinkedIn website. So real interesting. It also identified the acquisition date or the active date because when you're, you're basically targeting like a portfolio company, the date of the investment is important because that basically fuels like how active they need to be to get to an end result before they sell. That's usually three to five years or five to seven, just a little extra I'm giving you uh, just based on my experience and what I've seen. Them. So step two, I was a little disappointed on that uh, because I was looking for more. So basically deep research beats it on the deep research, if you will. That's the name. So let's shuffle on over. I want to go to um, this is the prompt that I said at the end, I wanted to provide for you. And I could provide all three of these, the Steve Jobs prompt, the data analysis prompt, like the hyper-specific research. Um, and at the same time, this last one I'm going to show you, but comment in the chat thread. And, uh, if you 
you know, if there's enough interest, then I'll, I'll create a page and we'll, we'll start to get this to you out on a reoccurring basis. Okay. So here's another one. Um, what are the top 10 ways you can use as a super agent? I'm the CIO and I basically list, I'm the AI transformation company who serves these. Um, I work with the CRO or CMO. My goal is to free up 20 hours a week while also 2 xing revenue in the next 12 months. So what I'm doing here, and this is critical for any AI tool to use, and what you could do is basically ask the AI tool, how do I use you best? What am I going to get the best results with? And if you do that, uh, you'll start to get really good outputs because it'll it'll process and think through and share with you how to do it. Now, you can't ask Excel how to use Excel better. You can't do the same thing with PowerPoint either, right? So what you're going to see on here is I have this where it, it gave me 10 pretty solid ideas like content creation, creation, distribution, research, roadmap generator, market intelligence dashboard. I didn't get a chance to stay with this. This probably would have been pretty, pretty solid to do. Sales enablement, pipeline, workshop, data analysis, and even thought leadership amplification. So some really strong categories there. Now I said, all right, let's go deeper on one. So then it, the thing that I loved is it started to use all different tools and it started to look in areas for content creation and pick ideas, right? So I think this, this was pretty strong in terms of what it was starting to do. And what it did is it then created a content strategy for exactly what I'm doing. It talked about my content pillars, which you see here, content mix, posting schedule. So I think like these are really strong foundational elements. And then it even started to create posts of like a carousel post. So I'm going to run these through, put these in text and, and see what they look like when I visually generate them. And some of this looks like pretty solid language. Now, it's obviously not to the level where I would want it for something that I would use. It's got a data visualization post, case studies, interactive. And so I would say the quality is pretty solid. And that goes through week by week what I should do and then an engagement strategy and how I can measure success. Okay. So to summarize it all in all, I would say, you know, Gensmark, I have, I'm excited about the opportunity, but I don't think it's quite there yet in terms of the execution. I even tested with the exact prompt in the demo and it, it with a like one minor tweak to customize it to me and it didn't come up with the right results and it got caught in the looping again. The reason why I'm sharing this video with you is there's a lot of marketing and a lot of hype about the perfect demo and it shows really well. And I, like I said, I think GenSpark can be amazing potentially, but right now it's not there for me. So I would still use tools that are specialized like Gamma, which is agentic in nature as well. Deep research, uh, and that can be cross Gemini or Google. And then for ideation, it's okay for ideation, but like right now, I wouldn't necessarily latch myself to that wagon. I would still use a general purpose purpose, large language models, and then roll from there. So if you want to hear more from me, check out the next video at the same time. Uh, I will also include a link if you comment below about where you can start to get some of these prompts that I'm sharing, because I think that's something that will really start to maximize these videos for you, what you're doing, and help you take things to the next level. So appreciate you joining me today. We'll see you all on the next video.